Hello tarot friends and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and today I have my very first unfair comparisons video for you. I want to talk about diversity in Marseille decks or historic decks, um, but specifically sort of French style Marseille decks. Um, it's a topic that I've seen a lot of people talking about on TarotTube and I'm really glad to see this conversation uh, happening. Um, I'll mention some uh, particular individuals um, that I've been learning from. Uh, and so I want to do my own unfair comparisons and look at three decks with you, um, but also talk about some sort of honorable mentions, uh, other decks that include diversity um, that I happen to have in my collection and a couple of others. Um, so the three decks we're going to talk about today are the Tarot Cyrene, the Diverse Tarot de Marseille, and the Tarot de Marseille, um, this is the deck from Fournier, which is based on the Convert deck. Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those in a second um, and give you all the details. But before I do that, um, I first want to say thank you to Mixtress Ray for, I think she started this whole unfair comparisons concept. And it's really interesting because um, she, you know, she compares uh, decks that maybe have like a similar theme but do it very differently um, or have like maybe a similar art style but have the topics are very different. So I find these videos very interesting and I'm glad that other people have kind of picked up on this um, tag or concept for a video. It's always interesting to see unusual uh, comparisons or things that you might not think to to compare to each other, but for some reason, you know, that provides a lot of interest. Um, I also want to say thank you to Kelly Bear. Um, she made a video in the last couple of weeks called So You Think Marseille Decks Are Ugly. And um, while that wasn't specifically about diversity in Marseille, she did have a number of Marseille decks uh, in that video that featured various types of diversity. Um, and then down in the comments section is actually where I learned about this uh, deck, the Diverse Terra de Marseille. And I think maybe I had seen it on Make Playing Cards a while back, but when you go on Make Playing Cards, you can only see like one or two images, and it didn't grab me. And it wasn't until I was prompted again by this person's comment to go online and find a walkthrough myself that this deck really grabbed me and I ended up buying a copy. So, um, so thank you uh, to everybody involved in that situation. And then the other shout out I have is to, uh, well, two more people. Um, Auntie Kay's Tarot uh, did an unfair comparisons of her own where she compared this um, diverse TDM to two other decks. So uh, her video featured the Multi Marseille by Tom Benjamin and the Squid Cake Marseille. Uh, and I'll link that video below. Um, I also want to say thank you to Tom Benjamin while I do not. Uh, anymore have a copy of the Multi Marseille. Um, I did for a little while and uh, that's a deck that's available on Make Playing Cards and it features a broader array of diversities than some of the decks I'm going to show you today. So that's another option um, and again Kelly Bear features that in a couple of her videos um, and Tom Benjamin of course has a, a walkthrough of his own deck on his channel so um, you can see those. I also did do a walkthrough of the um, the Multi Marseille. It's based on the Jean Noble or the Jean Noble, um, and I did a side by side between a historic version of that deck and then Tom's uh, recoloration and updating. Also, just today, um, I happened to be watching Tom Benjamin's channel, and I went back a couple of weeks to see what I'd missed, and he did a walkthrough of another diverse deck called the Estrella Tarot. Um, it is by an artist who styles herself Ash La Estrella, um, or Ash of the Star. And she, uh, she speaks French. I'm not sure where she's originally from. Um, but she is an artist who is also a person of color. And she made this amazing pop culture diverse Terra de Marseille that I absolutely love. And it's not in print right now, but she's going to be reprinting it. So that is on my wish list now. Um, and thanks to Tom Benjamin for alerting me to that because um, her video and the, uh, the one other video I saw on YouTube are in French and they probably would have never like come up in my feed. So um, 
yeah, that is really, really tempting. Um, I will say that there are some other diverse Marseilles that I don't have. Kelly Bear also mentions one recently. It's called the Terre de Marseille Feel Good. And it's a French deck um, that features kind of younger um, looking characters, more sort of teens and, and early 20s kind of, um, you know, millennials and Gen Z uh, kind of folks um, with like modern, you know, modern uh, dress, moder modern um, implements and things. And, that, and that's cute. It doesn't appeal to me, but um, so there are others out there. There's another one um, that Auntie Kay uh, mentions in her video and actually shows. Uh, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's all um, very symbolic. So the imagery is very condensed. You don't get full figures. And there's also a deck called the New Rosenwald Tarot by Ella Mortimer. It's based on the Taroki Rosenwald, a historic deck from Italy, and uh, features both colored backgrounds and people of various ethnicities uh, recolored from the original deck. There's more than I can even talk about in this video, um, but before we get started on the flip through, I do want to show you some other examples that won't be part of the full, um, the full th flip through. Let's start here. So this is the Playing Marseille by Ryan Edward. So it has, you know, cards like this that are kind of between the Marseille arrangement with the, um, this is the King of Cups. So he has a cup, but then he also has the, the King of um, Hearts uh, type arrangement with, you know, the sword behind his head and this kind of playing card style of, of drawing um, his body and his clothes and everything. Um, and this was be pretty subtle, I think, um, but there is some skin tone and body uh, shape diversity here. So you get, you know, characters that are sort of looking like this, you know, very light skinned, and then you get sort of medium tones, and, you know, you get some hair that's lighter, some hair that's more gray um, to show some age diversity, and then you get folks that have, you know, slightly darker skin tones. So it's nothing radical, um, but it's it's worth a mention, I think, just the fact that, you know, there is diversity. There was clearly an intention to include something here. The next one I'll mention is this deck. Uh, it's an independent deck called Tarot Morandi. This was originally kickstarted, and then there was um, a second printing, I believe. I don't know if it's still in print or available. Uh, Vincent Molina Pardo is the artist. And it's kind of in an abstract style, um, and often you don't see diversity when you end up uh, in, a, in a sort of non-strictly figurative style like this. But uh, this artist decided to include some, you know, feature diversity here. So um, we have age diversity and we have definitely some skin tone diversity. So I can appreciate that. And it's not, they don't all look exactly the same. The last one I'll mention is this deck, um, which is very much out of print. Um, I think it was produced in the 90s. This is the Tarot de Roy Nisanka and my, Maria Mestre or Naria Nestre. I've, I've never really known who this artist is and I've tried to look them up before. Um, but this deck is set in the 1100s um, kingdom of Nisanka in what is now Sri Lanka. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. It features um, traditional uh, art style and costumes. And while it is all, I should say, mostly Sri Lankan uh, people, um, you can see there's quite a bit of diversity in terms of skin tone and uh, features. So even within this nation, uh, we're not looking at a homogenous population. Everyone, you know, has their, their own look about them. Um, and I just love this deck. I love the textiles. I love the color palette. Um, all of the beautiful uh, headdresses and the jewelry. And, you know, look at this, like, horse is all decked out with blankets and this beautiful saddle cover and stuff. Just absolutely breathtaking. I really like it. Um, the way that they've done sheer fabric here, we, you know, where this uh, woman is wearing a veil um, that comes down behind her. So yeah, I really appreciate this. 
and you can see it's not just you know one skin tone or two skin tones there's there's quite a variety of here, here um, kind of representing a pretty good cross-section of the population so um, again even though it's sort of one culture um, you still get a lot of diversity and this is an interesting card um, so this is the Pope and um, one thing that Auntie Kay pointed out in her video uh, is that you know she was glad that the Pope in this deck is European is white and um, because she was talking about how you know you can't decolonize a colonizer um, a colonizing religion of Catholicism so I thought that was an interesting remark in it and it's something I've been thinking about a lot but I appreciated it um, and so here you also get you know I have no idea what this artist's intention was um, or even this artist's intention but the the end result is that you get um, a white uh, Pope and not you know someone who's been redrawn in another way so that's just an interesting observation all right, so let's look a little bit more closely at our three decks here. Again, this is the Tarot Sirene by Wandering Oracle. This is the box for the Tarot Sirene. It's this lovely um, iridescent color. And as the name implies, we have merpeople. Um, and Georges is, I believe, originally from Mexico and identifies as a queer person of color. Um, in the middle here, we have the diverse Tarot de Marseille. And the credit on the title card here is Moonchild Tarot. Um, she also goes by Elisa's Magical Space. And I will link to her uh, walkthrough of her own deck here. Um, because I think it's interesting to hear her talk about her intentions for this deck. Um, she redid the coloration. So it's not a traditional color scheme for Marseille. And she based it off of a seven chakra system with colors associated with each chakra, as well as a four elemental system uh, with four colors, um, one for each element. So we'll see some color coding and things um, throughout this deck. I'm not going to try to re-explain it. I'm going to let her do that because she does a good job in her own video. So I'll just point you to her explanation. But I wanted to mention that the color choices here are quite uh, intentional. And then our third deck here is the Le Tarot de Marseille, um, also known as the Real Tarot of Marseille. <laughs> uh, this is by Fournier, and it's still in print. Um, this is, happens to be a vintage copy uh, from the 1980s when it was first released. The artwork is by Marty Sug de Guler, and this deck and the Diverse Tarot de Marseille are based on the Conver deck. So um, if you're not familiar with tarot history, the three big names I would say um, in Tarot de Marseille, um, sort of the original decks that were referenced and copied most frequently were the Nicholas Conver, the um, Jean Dodal, uh, which is the one that the Playing Marseille is based on, and then the Jean Noble, uh, which is the one that Tom Benjamin's um, Multi Marseille is based on. And uh, one of the reasons I no longer have the Multi Marseille is that I don't really like the Noble very much. Um, I don't like the shape of some of the hip suits. And um, yeah, it just it wasn't as appealing. Um, I will also say that, you know, while I appreciate that um, Tom Benjamin took the time to try to create a more diverse deck. And the other thing is that some of the folks that had very dark skin in his deck, it was very hard to see their features. So I think that I've seen this quite a bit um, from artists where they're trying to represent folks with medium dark to quite dark skin. And it can be very hard to pick out facial features um, if you don't include proper shading and contrast to show, you know, where is the nose, where are the lips, where are the cheekbones. You end up with this like um, kind of homogenous color with just a pair of eyes staring out at you. And that's kind of the impression I got, you know, and I don't want to pick on Tom because like I said, I've seen it in other decks. The Star Seeker Tarot was one that I really enjoyed and loved at first when I first got it. And then I ended up selling um, all of my copies of that. I had multiple copies of it and I ended up selling all of them because you know, again, the representation there was just a little bit, um, 
I couldn't tell what the expressions were on the people's faces. So there's a lot of um, subtlety to this art, uh, the art of creating art and the art of portraiture that goes into these kinds of decisions. And, you know, some of it may be a matter of personal taste, but I think some of it has to do with, you know, how we're representing uh, people in groups that we're not a part of. So we just have to be a little bit careful with that. And while I'm talking about shading and, you know, subtlety in sort of showing people's um, features and expressions, you can see uh, the difference here in these two cards. So here we have just a single flat skin tone, and here we actually have shading in the cards. We can see that there's light on this cheekbone, and then there's a darker shade around, you know, the beard and the, the bottom of the face. And there's light on the forehead, there's accents on the nose. So the features really stand out here, whereas here it's all one skin tone. And so depending on how you're trying to present your um, copy or your redrawing of a historic deck, if you go this direction, you're kind of stuck, you know, because you're going to pick a single tone to represent how that person looks. And if it's a darker tone, then you don't get the uh, benefit of highlights and shading to show that expression. Um, whereas if you were to take a pr an approach like this, where they've sort of added a 3D effect almost to these cards, we'll see that as we go through here, then you actually get that opportunity to play with light and shadow, and then you can pick out features and actually show better expression. So it's another challenge for the artist as to how, you know, how close to the original sort of very basic wood block with a single color kind of blobs of, of stenciled in color are you going to go, and then how does that affect your ability to really add, you know, other subtle changes to the deck. Um, so again, I don't want to pick on anybody. I don't want to say, you know, anyone did a terrible job. There's some challenges, and then because of those challenges, I think different decks are going to appeal to different people. Um, what I do really appreciate about Tom Benjamin's deck is that he included not just you know, skin tone diversity, but he actually redrew uh, people's faces and heads and hair to kind of go with the ethnic background that he was trying to represent. Um, so he, he didn't fall into that trap of like just creating blackface. And then the other thing that is that he added other kinds of diversity. So he's got body diversity, um, he's got ability diversity, he's got age diversity all throughout his deck. So I think there's so much going for that deck and I, um, you know, encourage you to take a look at it. There was a enough factors to me that it didn't quite appeal, and so I ended up um, actually giving it away as part of a, a giveaway for my uh, channel anniversary. Um, so that said, um, what we have here on the table in front of us is again Terra Cyrene. This is a totally original creation. Um, it is not based on any particular historic deck, and like I said, it features all mer people. Um, it's also quite queer. Um, again, I think uh, Georges identifies as part of the LGBTQ plus community, um, so that does not surprise me at all. It sort of looks like we're at uh, gay pride in, in some of the cards here, which I really appreciate. So that's an added layer of diversity. Here in the center, we have the diverse uh, Terra de Marseille, which I really wish was called something else. I think it could be called something like the Elemental Chakra uh, TDM or something like that, because that would be a more accurate representation of what it is. Um, this is a redrawn uh, Conver deck, like I said, um, which is also the deck that this, this is based on. And I do have a copy of the CBD Terra de Marseille, which is a restored copy of this historic Conver deck, so it's the closest I have to, um, you know, like a facsimile or something like that. This uses uh, very close to the original coloration. Um, all of the line work and everything was painstakingly redrawn um, by the artist that uh, Yoav Bendov worked with to create this deck. So I thought it would be a good reference for, we could look at a few cards and see how these two decks compare with this, you know, original one. All right, so here we have The Fool. And uh, one more thing that Tom Benjamin mentioned, I think in his own walkthrough of his multi Marseille deck, was that there were certain cards where he was sensitive to not making them um, into people of color. Um, and The Fool was one of those. Um, other ones included The Hanged Man, for obvious reasons, um, and The Devil. And there may have been one other one, um, but just ones that have, you know, a certain connotation or negative connotation, he made sure that those were all represented by white Europeans. And I think that's, you know, a good, uh, a good choice to make.
So as we get into some of these cards, I do want to bring out this Conver deck. So here you can see the difference between the original, you know, the restored original, and then these two decks. So this deck is the closest in terms of the line work, but what you can see is that the artist uh, seems to have stretched the images horizontally. So she's broadened all the characters, including the faces. And to my eye, that's done something to make them less sort of narrow and pinched and um, waspy looking and opened up the ability to then overlay different skin tones without it looking quite so much like, you know, blackface or, or something like that. Um, I'll let you be, you know, your own uh, best judge on whether this is, you know, effective and comfortable for you to see. Um, but for me, it's it's okay. It sort of works. Um, here you can see that these are completely repainted. So while they're based on the Conver, um, again, you have all that shading and and things like that. And so this would be, you know, another step away from the traditional, but it would give you that opportunity to include more diversities in this art style because you get more detail. However, um, the artist uh, did not choose to do that. So um, that is what it is. Um, the other reason I'm picking this deck uh, to do this unfair comparison, I should have said this in the beginning, um, is the La Terre de Marseille has all colored in backgrounds, as does this deck. So. Um, you know, I am not only not a fan really of traditional um, Marseille color palettes in terms of the primary colors that are used, but I also find that the stark white backgrounds on all the cards get really boring after a while. And I like, I like more setting and scene, and I love that um, both of these include a colored in background to them. So that really pleases me. Um, and both of these are actually color coded by suit as well. So we'll get, we'll see that when we get into the pips. Um, here's the papess. Um, and again, you get um, not just skin tone diversity, but ethnic diversity. Um, to me, this looks like a South Asian uh, type of mermaid. Um, And again, it's this broadening of the faces in the Diverse Marseille that I think opens up the opportunity um, to see a, a range of ethnicities in these characters. So, you know, with a, a slightly um, more round face and a slightly larger nose, um, this could be someone of Hispanic or Latin American descent, perhaps, um, darker hair. So, you know, who knows? Um, and I'm not trying to assign a fixed identity to these people. I just, um, I'm trying to show that, you know, they could represent a number of, of different folks, per perhaps. Um, and if you have a different opinion on that, please feel free to share. We definitely get a lot of di body diversity also in the Tarot Sirene. We'll see that as we go through. And not just like fat people and thin people, but like small people and tall people. Which I appreciate. In her video, the artist also explains uh, she has reversed the direction of some of the cards, so she's flipped them. And that's intentional. I love our hermit crab hermit. He's great. The other thing I really like about the uh, diverse Terra de Marseille in the center is not just that there's a variety of interesting colors throughout the deck, but that within each card, I really like the way that she has decided to pair up different colors. I think they're so beautiful. It's interesting that these two have a similar color palette, actually, these two cards. 
So that's pretty cool. Interesting uh, hair color choices for both of the, the hanged men over here. Brilliant death card. Love it. I love the dark sky here on this tower card um, and the, the verdant green in the foreground. And here is really cool. We have this um, semi-submerged tower, but the top is above the water and being broken off by the storm. And I didn't mention it, but you probably noticed that the Diverse Terra de Marseille is in English, and these two are in French. Again, cool hair color choices all across the board here. I like it. And now for pips. So you will see color coding across all three decks, actually. Um, this one doesn't have color coding in the background, but the um, implements are all similar color. I will say I'm not as big a fan of the wands in the um, Terra Serene. There's something about this brown and pink combo um, that I don't really like. Even though these are brown and pink, it's so funny. I'm just noticing this. So these are um, sort of a dark chocolate brown, lighter brown, and then a pink background. But because the backgrounds are colored and the foliage is big, um, I like this combination better than I like these, which are pretty plain. Interesting that they both went with the same color combination. I think of the three, I like these green ones the best. Um, so we'll see how we do here. What's nice about a consistent color coding is that when you lay these out in a bigger spread, um, you can really tell the difference of you know, what you're seeing, and you can kind of count up how many of each suit you have quickly, um, which is something that I do, you know, oh, this is a cups heavy spread, or this, you know, this has a lot of swords in it, what, what could that possibly mean? So I like a good color coding. The, uh, the guys in this deck have some facial hair. Um, traditional Marseille does too. We'll see it on some of the kings, but 
uh, more facial hair here and actually some body hair as well uh, which we'll see always nice to see here we get an example of a redrawn figure with darker skin and I would say this is borderline I can still see um, all the features you know the um, the mound of the chin I can see the lips the arc of the nose the eyebrows um, even the, the slight double chin here and I think the artist did a good job of you know pulling in multiple uh, melanated skin tones um, without making them uh, unreadable I love this. Both of these queens actually have red hair. This one has like flaming red hair. <laughs> I really enjoy that. Got another mustache on this guy. And so this is what I mean by bodybuilder. You saw some uh, some leaner um, kind of uh, masculine presenting figures, and then the, this guy's a little, you know, he's more bodybuilder. Um, I get the sense that he he goes to the gym, the aquatic gym. All right, onto our cups, and here we have a teal background in the center or turquoise. I love the contrast of turquoise and pink here. Um, and then here we have this persimmon kind of color. It's like an orangey coral. I do like all the little squiggly eels and fish on the uh, Terra Sirene. I remember making a video um, early on where I was talking about this deck, but I hadn't bought it yet, and I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I can handle all the squidgy, um, squishy, slimy sea creature things, but I actually really like it. If you were just learning Marseille, I would say probably none of these decks would be a good choice, um, simply because a lot of the books about Terra de Marseille focus uh, quite a bit on those primary colors and the, them uh, being of importance. So, you know, um, blue has a certain representation. I can't remember all of them. Red is for blood and, you know, blood ties and um, wine and uh, traditions and things like that. Um, you know, green is for life and verdancy and potency. So um, if you were going to study the Marseille from a, a color theory perspective or what um, esotericists kind of developed as their own color theory about this, you'd probably want to choose something like this. Um, I don't quite use that in my readings, so I prefer just a color palette that is enjoyable and engaging uh, to me, and all three of these would fit that bill for sure. Here's our water child. Um, yeah, I really love the pink hair on our central figure and the purple, uh, the purple hair on our figure on the left. It's great. Each of our knights in the uh, Terra Sirene is also riding a different um, creature. So that was a porpoise. Um, and I think we'll see some others as well. It's the Queen of Cups. And here's one of our kind of dad bod guys, you know. Nothing wrong with that. The sword suit. I 
I really like the green swords on our Terracyrene, and I like in the center the blue swords with a yellow background. I um, would assign yellow with air, um, which is what our artist has done here. So it's nice when those artistic choices uh, align with one's own preferences. These cards are slippery and I keep having to kind of move them around. I really love the fish-shaped uh, handles on these swords. I think they're so cool. Such a fun touch. Yep, so this cavalier has a seahorse instead of our porpoise. Realizing how goofy this uh, Knight of Swords horse looks in both of these, actually. Very funny. Love it, love it, love it. suit the coins so here we have some different choices she's got um, a green for the background here uh, to represent the earth suit and then here we have a sort of a chartreuse color it's it's not quite yellow um, it's kind of a limey yellow uh, but it's not it's not the intense green that we got in the wands so um, it's distinguishable from that Neither of these artists put their name on the um, two of coins, which would be traditional, um, as you see here. Um, and I kind of wish they had, but I do like this um, sea snake or double-headed eel that uh, Georges has included on his deck. It's pretty cool. So like the um, non-traditional arrangement of foliage or sea creatures on the pips on the um, Terracyrene. And it reminds me actually of the um, some of the pips on the Tarot of Roy Nisanka, the um, Sri Lankan deck I showed you at the beginning of this. It's basically anything to liven it up. I like Marseille and I like the, the open style of reading. Um, I like the very neutral... Uh, way that you can read pips in the system or in this presentation of tarot I don't really consider it a separate system but um, but I do get a little bored sometimes with the same old images so um, it's nice to have just a slight variation like that 
And our last quartz. Oh yeah. This guy's riding a crocodile. I fucking love it. Love it. He's got like cornrows or, you know, dreadlocks or something. I just, I love the whole thing. The whole thing is very good. Look at her funny, like, sh seashell shaped couch. Ugh, so good. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Uh, there is the Terra Sirene, the diverse Terra de Marseille, and the Terra de Marseille by Fournier. Um, like I said, all three of these are still available. Um, I will link to the various artists uh, things um, in the comments below so you can see, or in the description below, um, so you can see uh, more about them and where to get these decks. Um, the Fournier deck should be available from major booksellers or tarot sellers. Um, I know, for example, Tarot Arts in the U.S. Uh, sells their decks. Um, this one is available on main playing cards, and then this one is available directly from the artist, so I'll link his website. So thank you for joining me. Let me know what you thought about this video, anything that I said, um, any of the other decks I showed you. Uh, let me know what diverse Marseille decks you have. Um, Oh, there was one other I meant to mention that was kind of on my list um, to get, but it's a majors only, and I have decided that I don't collect majors only. It's called the Hip Hop Marseille. So it is all uh, hip hop artists, um, and it's pretty cool. Um, but it is, again, uh, just 22 cards. But yeah, if you know of any other, uh, please shout them out in the comments. Um, like I said, the Estrella Tarot is probably next on my list once it comes back in print later this year. Um, but any others you can think of, let me know what you have in your collection or, you know, ones that you've seen that you've got your eye on. Uh, I would always love to learn more. And until next time, uh, be good, take care, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.